a long time ago. <laughs> in the life before this one. I'd gotten into the habit of going into offbeat and unfamiliar bars where the atmosphere was curious. And sometimes unnerving. Don't ask me why, because I can't explain. I go into the place, seek out an empty bar stool, order a drink, and watch the passing parade of freaks and grotesques and the rituals they felt they needed to go through at that particular time in that particular place. Sometimes I'd talk to somebody or somebody would talk to me, but more often than not, I'd remain on the sidelines watching the activity. Boy, yeah. One night, a man with the face of a bulldog and the build of a truck driver asked if he could buy me a drink. When I asked him why, he said, I'd like to, that's all. So I accepted his drink and we talked for a while. Then he asked if we could move away from the bar and sit at the table. Well, there are lots of empty ones, so I said, okay. When we sat down, he said, I ask you here for a reason. And I said, I figured as much. I told him. I want you to forgive me, he said. I want you to forgive me and bless me, for I have sinned. All right, I said, playing along. I forgive you. Now go thou and sin no more. No, he said, not so fast. Wait until I tell you what I've done. Then you can decide whether I deserve to be forgiven or blessed. I was really hoping to avoid this because I really didn't want to hear what he had done. I uh, couldn't care less. But I had accepted his drink, so I had to fulfill my end of the bargain. I killed a man tonight, he said. He was a man I love, still love, but he's lying in a bathtub with his head bashed in and his body blistered and burned from where I Try to set him apart until I couldn't stand the stink anymore. Then I turned on the shower and opened the windows to let the smoke out. What about the smoke alarm? I asked. I uh, took the batteries out. I took the batteries out before I torched it. Then you got to understand, I was crazy with jealousy. I wouldn't have done it if he hadn't said what he said and did what he did. All right. What did he do? I asked. He let me service him over and over again, which I didn't mind and which was my pleasure. But when it came time for him to reciprocate, he refused, more than refused. He acted as if the idea or even the thought of it was the most repulsive thing imaginable. Now, you got to understand when a person services somebody, they're supposed to service him back. That's the way the game's played. That's the way the rules are written. We had met at this very bar some nights before. We stood at the jukebox and we talked. Then he let me come home with him, where, like I said, I serviced and serviced him without any payback. You see, he was young and beautiful, so I thought, well, I'll uh, indulge him a little bit. In time, figuring that, maybe, well, he'll get around to indulging me. 
but that never happened. We had met almost nightly for two weeks, but the pattern never changed. Still, I was willing to go through with it because when the prize is acceptable, when the prize is terrific, when the prize is beautiful, I can be a very patient person. Then when we met earlier tonight, he said the unforgivable thing. He said that this would be the last time and I don't want to see you anymore. When I asked him why, he said, because I'm bored and I want to move on to other adventures. Well, I said nothing. But I realized right then and there that this boy was evil and cruel and totally selfish just because he felt that his beauty gave him the right. We slept together, and I told him I understood what he was saying. I even thanked him for spending the time that we, that we did have together. Then when he dozed off, I got up, I found a hammer, and I hit him just as hard as I could. And I dragged him into the bathtub and poured alcohol all over him and set a light to it. That's when the smell and the smoke got to be so much. I had to get out of there. I had to quit. His face and ears burned. Then the hair on his head disappeared in a flash. That's when the smell and the smoke got to be so much. I had to turn on the shower. I had to let the smoke out, like I said. What do you plan to do? I asked after I digested his information for a little bit. Disappear, lose myself in the wilderness of this country. Start over. Other people have. Why not me? We sat in silence for a while. And then he asked, so uh, what do you think? You think I should be forgiven or not? And I said, well, if forgiveness is what you're after, then I forgive you. But you knew that right from the start. The truth is, I don't think you're after forgiveness. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's the reason you spoke to me. No. Why not? He was almost belligerent in the way he asked the question. I think you spoke to me because you wanted to boast glory in what you've done, but couldn't hold it inside. Couldn't keep a secret. No, not now. No, not so soon after you've done it. You need to tell someone. Crow about it a little and have that person appreciate the magnitude of what you think you've done. He said nothing. He got up, threw some money on the table for the drinks. left. <laughs> yeah, 
I watched him walk out knowing that I'd never see him again. And that's what happened.